Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. I'm going to take some time now to talk to you about one of my favourite rigs. It's a scratching rig that I use um, use all the time. Uh, a Wessex rig or a one up one down rig. Now uh, I say it's a scratching rig. It's a, it's a rig that I use all the time. It's on the beach, on the rocks, on the piers. It's, it's basically um, it's a rig that I use to either catch me live baits or it's the first rig that I usually cast out when I get to a mark, just so I've got something fishing because it will pick up practically anything. And this is this is the rig in its entirety. I keep them on these winders. They're great. You can get two rigs, two rigs on a winder. I'll show you it now and talk you through it, and then I'll show you how to make it. And while I'm making it. I'll tell you little little reasons and little tips why I have it like I do. And this is this is it in its entirety. This is the one up part of your one up one down, and this is the one down part. So effectively, you've got two rigs in one because you've got a bait suspended off the bottom, which is just like like a flapper rig or a pattern oyster rig, and you've also on the bottom you've got a sliding ledger rig so on this hook you'd be expecting to pick up like your whiting your pouting your scully bass your ras any other fish like that and your one on the bottom you'd be expecting to pick up your fish flat on the bottom tight to the bottom so i've had thrown back rays place dabs flounder bream you name it this this rig here is accounted for probably 30 species it's cracking and um, like I say you can use it on any ground generally you use it on um, soft and clean ground because it, it's only light you don't want to get snagged up the components that you will need for making this rig are here the first thing we're going to start with is the main body the trace body now from one of my other videos you might recognize this it's a pain that a lot of anglers feel whenever you get to a mark sometimes you get there and it's full of crap it, the anglers that have been there before you have left a load of rubbish you know, like discarded uh, bait wrappers one of the things that you find quite often is discarded line I picked this up on a mark the other day now usually what I'll do is I'll just bundle it all up if it's knackered, if it's snapped, if it's old, if it's knotted and chuck it in the bin but every now and again you find a good bit now this is about 10 to 12 foot of what I estimate to be between 60 and 80 pound. So I'm expecting that it was somebody's leader and they probably just chucked it away. There was no knots in it, so it wasn't a snap off, it was just discarded line. What better thing to do, what, <laughs> what better thing to do really than recycle it? Not only did I not leave it on the mark, but which cost me now. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is make sure it's in still, still in good nick. So if you run your fingers down it, you'll feel for any kinks, any knocks, any scratches, any imperfections that will weaken the line. And you're going to want about two feet. There you go, like that. On one end... The top end, this is going to go to your uh, go to your leader, you put one of your barrel swivels. Now you can either use a Palomar knot or use a uni knot. Palomars are incredibly strong but slightly bulkier. I'm going to use a uni knot because it's quicker to tie. Two, three, four. Always wet the knot. Tighten down. Taking off your tag end. Now you're going to make the one up part of your one up one down. First thing you're going to do, slide on a crimp, then a bead, then a little barrel swivel, then a bead, then a crimp. So 
So it's in that order like that. Now you're going to set at what height this fish is at. So bearing in mind that your weight is going to go on this end. I like to set it about two thirds of the length. So there you can see. Now, if you've got crimping pliers, use crimping pliers. If you haven't, you can use just normal pliers, but just be careful. All you need to do is you just need to depress the crimp enough that it deforms it and holds onto the mono. You don't want to go too hard with it because it'll eat into the mono and damage it, weaken it. You might get a snap off or worse, touch wood, is that you'll get a good fish and it'll snap you off, it'll be wounded. Right. I always do the bottom one first so that I can let gravity hold them down. Now all you want to do there is you want to hold them just tight enough so that that can move freely. If you hold it too tight the swivel won't move, if it's too slack you'll move around and you'll get twists. So it wants to be just just tight enough. So that your swivel, there look, is free to move. Right, test. That's to test that the, the crimps haven't damaged the mono. That's still, still as strong as you want. The next part is going to be take one of your snaps, put it on one of your one of your other barrel swivels. This is going to piece, This is going to be the piece that holds your lead. Now the leads you can use, depending on the venue. If you're fishing on if you're fishing on mud, you're probably better off using like a flat lead. If you're fishing on sand, what I sometimes like to do is I'm fishing on a beach and I'm fishing on like a clean sandy beach, is I'll use like a pear lead like that, which allows it to roll around a little bit to cover more area. Right. So you've put put your swivel and your snap together, and you're going to put a buffer bead on there, which is this little loomy bead. And the reason that you put that on there is so that when your lead is sliding up and down and it hits up against your knot, it's not going to damage the knot. You've got a buffer bead there in a way. And then right at the end, you're going to put another barrel swivel. So I'm just going to stick a uni knot in here. But again, because it's not important for it to be too streamlined. Two, three, four. Because it's not too important for it to be streamlined, you could use a Palomar knot, which is extra strong. Wet it, tighten it down, take off your tag end, and right on the very bottom, you're going to put your snap. So at the bottom of your trace, you end up with that. So there's your one up part, there's the part that's going to hold your lead. And there's the part that's going to go to your end. Right, the hooks that you can use, all I'm going to, all I'm using in this is I'm going to use 20 pound mono just because I think it's a good weight. You can use flor fluorocarbon is better for hook lengths because it doesn't kink as much, it's got less memory, um, but mono is fine. I'm going to use 20 pound mono because you don't want to go too light because if you get a decent fish, or you get a fish with teeth, like a thornback ray, it'll just snap you off straight away. Whereas you don't want to go too heavy, because if you go up to like 30 pound or 35 pound mono, it's quite rigid, and your bait won't have as good presentation. For the top hook length, this one here, it can't be any longer than this, because your hook will come up and will snag on your swivel when you're casting. So if this is 10 inches, make it six inches long. The bait that you're suspending off the bottom, what I like, what I like to use for it is like a little chino hook sometimes, or um, even a bait holder. Now a bait holder hook, I've had a lot of success with them scratching around. I'll show you in a second once I get this tied. Two. Three, four. 
another uni knot. So I'm a bit older hook. Right, these bait holder hooks, for anyone who doesn't know, this one is slightly offset, which means that the hook, as you can see, isn't straight. Bait holder, all it is, is, you see on the back of the shank there, there are little tiny barbs, so that when you slide a soft bait up there, like a worm, or like a piece of squid, or mackerel, or anything soft, it hangs up on the barbs, so it holds the bait. It's a bait holder hook. See that look? Because I've made it six inches long, it's not going to snag up on the top. And because, because the barrel swivel is still loose inside the beads, it can swing around in the tide like that and it doesn't tie up. Like I say, um, these are Cox and Roll size 4 bait holders, but Chino works great as well. Chino, all I do sometimes is you can put, um, put like a prawn on there or put a little calamari head. Or just like a little blob of bait and the reason a chino is good is because it's got quite a wide gape all I'll do is um, you could even get like a little hardback crab like a little five pence piece or ten pence piece size crab just hook it on there now your lead I'm just going to use like a little pair lead for this just to show you your bottom hook length wants to be this length so that's about, I don't know what, 16 to 18 inches long. The reason you don't want any longer than that is because when you cast, it'll swing up and get caught up here. Do you understand now why I said that I like this one to be a third of the way down? Because this one that's going to be along the bottom here wants to be longer. Again for this, I'm just going to use 20 pound mono. I actually caught my um, PB red mullet on the bottom of a Wessex rig. Um, last year I had some fantastic place on this rig. In a few of my videos you see me catching catching fish with it. In fact I can even landed a thornback ray in one of my videos. Fishing live prawn. Live prawn on the bottom hook of a Wessex rig. They are, they are fantastic because effectively like I said about that long ago because like I said they are effectively two rigs in one they are a running ledger tight on the bottom and they're a bait suspended off the bottom now for this bottom hook like I said you're going for flatfish this is the one that I would generally put my worm baits so my ragworm, my lugworm um, anything like that because those are the types of baits that I'm going to be using I like to use like a wormer hook, um, you can, an Aberdeen hook or a match hook. Um, this is uh, this is a I think this is a Cox and Roll specimen, but a, a stinger would work just as well. Something that's good for presenting a worm. Also, what I do is I'll have a winder that's got four or five hook lengths on of this bottom hook. Because this is the one that's most likely to get snarled up by crabs. So all I'll do is I'll, I might even have one or two pre-baited in a box. So as soon as I bring it in, as soon as I wind it in, I'll just unclip the bottom and then clip on a new trace. There's your one down that sits on the bottom, there's your one off that sits up in the tide. All made on recycled line. Like you said, it took me, took me less than 10 minutes. Quite often what I'll do is when I'm set at mark and once I'm set up, I'll knock some of these rigs out. It doesn't take no time at all. And you saw how easy it is. All you need is your very basic components and a pair of pliers. 
I want to tell you about it. You can't clip it down as well. So generally, if you're going to be using softer baits like ragworm or like maddies and things like that, you can't power cast this. This isn't like an extra long distance rig. This is just like a scratching rig. This is 60, 60 80 yards. Generally, just after the waves or if you're on a pier, just give it a short lob or in a harbour or anything like that. Perfect rig. I use it straight up and down off the pier sometimes because you pick up brass and dobs and flounders. It is... Um, it is one of my favourites. It's um, the Wessex rig or the uh, the one up, one down. Um, there, as you can see, there's a few hook links already made up. So all I do is, if I bring one in and it's knackered, just wind one off, clip it straight up. Yeah, that's it. You could you could even make it a two up, one down. But the only problem there is, is your rig body ends up really long. I find that one up, one down is perfect. I hope this helps. Um, you will see in some of my other videos, me using this rig. It is generally the scratching rig that I use on the beach or on the pier. Um, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy it.